Before worship, I had a brief moment with Katie, and she was sharing with me that Advent is one of her favorite seasons, maybe her favorite season. And I have to tell you that while I'm a big fan of Easter, Advent is pretty close for me too. I think we might be in the minority, honestly, because Advent is odd. We hear all these stories about the second coming and the world ending and all this apocalyptic uh, messages, right? And we sit in here, and while we have some garland and some lights and the poinsettias, there's no Christmas in here. Not yet. But there's Christmas out there, everywhere. I've been hearing Christmas carols now for at least three weeks. You can't go into a store without being surrounded by Christmas trees and such. And Lord knows, Black Monday, what is it? Monday, whatever, the Cyber Monday is, is upon us tomorrow. And it's all about Christmas. And in the season of Advent, we're invited to something different. But for most of us, we just rush through it and pass by it, and we miss it. And I think part of the reason is because we don't like to wait. I was in the Starbucks line yesterday, and I don't know if you've ever been trapped in a Starbucks drive through or any other, for that matter. And I have no idea what the people two cars ahead of me were ordering. It seemed like enough for the entire, like, three generations of family. And I found myself getting so anxious and so like, and I had nowhere to go. And I think it's in our nature to want things now. That's the way we've all been kind of encultured and raised. And so we're given this season where we're told, oh, just wait, just wait. And it's interesting because what are we waiting for? I mean, really. Well, we say, well, we're waiting for, the, for Christmas. Well, what do we celebrate on Christmas? We celebrate the birth of baby Jesus. And you know what? That's already happened. It happened 2,000 years ago. Not a lot to wait for there. It's kind of, we already did that. And so what is it about this season that is so inviting to me and to Katie and maybe to some of you? And I think that if we're not waiting for a little baby born in a manger because that already happened, then maybe the thing that we're waiting for is really what Richard Rohr, Father Richard Rohr, would call the cosmic or universal Christ. It's the Christ that is available to us after the resurrection. And it's this Christ that we celebrate and that we wait for, and it's what the incarnation continues to be about. So maybe what we're waiting for is this Christ that continues to be born in our souls, in our hearts, and in this world, and in this history over and over and over again. And my friends, to me, that is very good news. We celebrate on Christmas the incarnation, the fact that God could not stay away from us, that God wanted so desperately to be with us that God became one of us, took on flesh and made everything that is matter holy. And maybe this is what we're waiting for. Maybe what we're waiting for is to fully realize that and to fully get that message. Because in the incarnation, God did not just say yes to Jesus. God said yes to us. But God did not just say yes to humanity. God said yes to all of creation and said, this is good and I'm in all of it. So maybe what we're really waiting for is not for God to get here because God has been here the whole time and not just for 2,000 years, but the whole time. So maybe what we're waiting for is for us to catch up Maybe part of what we're waiting for is for our own hearts to open enough that we can experience this God that is already here. This God that is already moving inside of us and has made everything around us holy. And we're supposed to make room for that. And so maybe what we're invited 
to do is to recognize that it is good to be human. That it is good to be alive. That it is good to be flesh and emotion and sexuality and all the things that are human. Maybe that's what we're waiting for. Maybe that's the part that we're asked to open up to, that it's already true, that we are holy, that all of this is. And we just keep forgetting that that's true. And so this, my friends, is what God loves. This and this and all of that. And we are asked to love it the same. And so maybe the room that we are being invited to during Advent, the room that we are being invited to make is in our own minds and in our own heart for a God who is already in us as us. Maybe what we're being invited to welcome in is this reality that it is already all good. Because maybe if we really believed that, then all the other things that concern us wouldn't even be an issue. I wonder how much pain and suffering there would really be in the world if we believed that we were good, that we were made in the image and the likeness of God, if we believed that we were sacred and holy because of the incarnation. There's nothing else to do except open our hearts like a manger and let God reside in there. And so these four weeks of Advent invite us to say yes to that. Invite us to remember that all the things that we want, all the things that we're homesick for, all the things that we miss that matter, are already present. We've just stopped listening. We've just stopped looking. And we've just stopped saying yes. And so welcome to this season of waiting. This season of promise and of hope. To this season of saying yes to the fact that you are good that you are holy, that you are blessed. And if we say yes to that, how might the kingdom of God show up in our lives? Amen.